Hi, this is Ghost Poet, and you're tuned into Minimum Wastage. It's an honour to be able to introduce Ghost Poet this afternoon. Thanks for joining us, Abara. It's, it's a real pleasure. No problem, Mike. Thank you. Now, you've very recently been nominated for the prodigious Mercury Music Prize. Yeah, Did it come yeah. as quite a shock? Yeah, really. It was, it was, it was never in my plans when making an album to, you know, create something that would be up for awards or ceremony or whatever. It's kind of, it's just a really good surprise, you know. It's been a, it's been a really, it's been a great year for me in the sense of I've been able to release an album of my music, you know, and everything that's come with it and being part of the Mercury Award is just kind of the icing on the cake for the year, you know. Is that something that you've been building towards uh, for a while, or is it something that's kind of just happened? Yeah, it, well, it's it's kind of one of them ones where you never know. Music is such a roulette wheel; you never know how it's all going to go, you know. So it was always it was for me. I just wanted to get music out there, you know. And I got, I got the opportunity to do that through Brownswood and release an album, um, but it was never a case of um, I expected this kind of reception, you know, or, you know, praise. I, for me, I just thought that people would take in the album, hopefully, and, you know, there'll be a kind of mixed reviews and, you know, people would mainly be like, there's, there's potential there and see what he does in the future. Never expected was everything that's happened is a complete surprise. How do you feel about the reception of the album? It's amazing, you know, it's like, it's more than I ever expected and it's deeply humbling because I just made this stuff in a spare bedroom, you know what I mean? And I keep saying that a lot but I need to keep saying that just to remind myself that it started from nothing, you know what I mean? And people from all over the world showing love to it and recommend it to their friends and stuff like that is, is, is deeply, deeply humbling and it's really encourages me to keep going and making more music, you know. I get the impression that with some of your tracks it's been a case of you've kind of been on a night out and had some fun yeah. and the sun's coming up and you're like, right, <laughs> I feel awful, let's write some music. You know what, that, that's never happened, <laughs> but in the sense of... Yeah, coming in for a night out and starting to write. I, I may try that one day. <laughs> see what happens. But um, it's definitely in there, in the mix, the idea of being out and coming back and thinking about the things you've done and the joy or the regret. You know, that's definitely in the mix, but I wouldn't say it's how I make my music. It would be quite... It would be quite terrible on the head in the mornings if I kept doing that every night to try yeah, and make God. music. Less alone as a language So no, I, it's definitely it's definitely in the mix I would say. Yeah. So it's more life experience that you draw influence from when yeah. you're sitting down to write music. Oh definitely. It's it's life, you know. It's the life that I've had, the life I'm having, the life I plan to have, the life around me with my friends and family, you know, strangers news everything the world you know that's that's my inspiration for for writing and creating music you know something i wanted to ask you about this afternoon mm. the video for survivor you're yeah. strolling around uh, and <laughs> stay in the middle of the night with a cup of tea and a, an awesome dressing gown if i do say so myself <laughs> how did that come about well it was kind of the idea of, of the director who's a good friend of mine um, but wants to be known as unknown, so we'll leave him as unknown. And um, it was his idea really to um, to do that, to have me in a dressing gown, strolling around in a kind of like conscious, subconscious type state and um, these kind of monsters in the background. And that was his idea. And at first I was like, this makes no sense, but I'll go with it. <laughs> and it was kind of a case of, um, yeah, he developed the idea. We worked with some really amazing people in pre and post production and put it together. And even though I liked the video at the end, I still wasn't quite like, I'm not sure about this, but 
the response has been great, you know, and that's that's you know, uh, it's definitely down to his vision and the way he he was determined that this is the idea, it's going to work, and it's been it's been it's been a, it's been a good little success, I would say. Watching some of your live videos, mm. there's quite a prominent element of visuals in the background. And yeah. Again, with the, your music videos, there mm. is a lot of kind of visual trickery mm. taking place. Mm. Do you feel that you want to be able to represent your music through the visual thing, or is it just something that yeah, definitely naturally think, crosses over? No, I think I think it's part and parcel of of music. You know, I think you can't neglect the visual side of things. It's as it's as important as the music these days, you know. And I think with the live, it's something I definitely want to develop much more and create more interactive type visual stuff that people can get involved with in the audience. I don't know what I'm just thinking, but that's I definitely want to develop that side of things to make it more and more interesting because it's an interesting part. Not everybody listens with their ears, you know, they, they need the visual aspect to get things sometimes or to create an atmosphere. And that's something I definitely want to do live and visual, video wise, it's what I've always wanted to do with every one of the videos, is create something that isn't expected and, and create something that is evolution every time from the last um, offering. So that's what we're trying to do. You moved down to London from Coventry, presumably to yeah, push yeah. The, the music thing. Mm -hmm. How do you like living in London? It's cool. I've, I was born and bred here, so I went to Coventry for university. So I went, I, I ended up staying for more than a degree. I was there for about 10 years. So I came back down about a year and a half ago. And it's good to be back in London. I think it's different this time because I guess when I left, I was still trying to find myself as a, as a man, you know, as a boy then, trying to find myself and work out what I wanted to do with my life, you know. So now coming back here, yeah, it's, it's, it's a much more interesting place. I look at it with different eyes, you know. So, yeah, it's good to be back. Well, yeah, I studied at uh, university in Warwick, which is oh, just yeah. on the outskirts of Coventry. Yeah. And I used to be a doorman in Warwick. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You used to be a doorman at work, UD. Wow. Maybe we uh, cross paths at some you point. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows that either. <laughs> no one knows that you used to be a doorman. Yeah. I seem to... My only memory, really, of Coventry is at the Coliseum on a Colleen. Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thursday, Monday night, 50p a drink. Yeah. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> yeah. You used to, you know... Colle Coventry's an interesting place. It's, got, it's, it's very much a student town, but when you... You strip that away, and for instance, when the students are on holiday, and you and it's just the locals, you realise Coventry is very much a, it's a special place. Do you know what I mean? It's got people with a lot of humour, a lot of dark humour, and you know a lot of grafters. People just trying to get through their daily daily business. Do you know what I mean? Be it a nine to five, be it a you know a five to nine or whatever. Just trying to just get through and it was it's a big inspiration for me yeah mm. it's interesting uh, talking to you this afternoon because listening to your music it has that very laid-back mood to it mm. and it seems to be very kind of representative of, of you yeah I, it's, for me I'm just kind of I'm most relaxed when I'm doing my music you know what I mean I'm creating and and participating in something that I feel I was meant to do, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm not very excitable, really. <laughs> I just kind of, just plod along and, you know, enjoy life as much as possible, you know what I mean? Well, the music I've heard from you so far has, has been really great. Oh, um, but past, much. past lines, uh, what can we expect to hear from you over the next 12 months? Well, I don't know, for, for me, I think I'm starting to work on new things and that maybe towards an EP, could be towards an album, I'm not sure. I would like to get an album out next year, but more than likely later in the year. And that just boils down to if the music's right, you know what I mean? And that's important. So I'm working towards new stuff and collaborations and potential remixes in the future and more gigs, you know, more creativity, more more more.
<laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about those projects and Avaro, it's been a real pleasure talking oh, with you today. Thank you so you much. Nice one.